I, I've always been very private with private. I've tried to be private with private life. Yeah. And it all came about from the first couple of years in Formula One where I thought everyone was just really nice. And uh, you, would, you would give everything. Mm. Um, and you would see it in, in the paper and it was, it was completely twisted. So you so become it, very private and you don't mm. give as much. Because there's a massive corporation yeah. behind you. So you, you, then you're saying you have to be very careful what you say. Because you're not just talking you know, on behalf of yourself. You're mm. talking on behalf of a, of a whole team of people. Mm. Um, but um, so yeah, sitting down and, and writing this was, it was very emotional actually, because mm. when you're racing, it's, it's from one race to the next. Um, and you don't really have time to think. Mm. So this year it's been, it's been great to really look at the, the good times, the bad times and, and the highs and the lows. So mm. um, it's been a lot of fun. Well, your, um, your dad features very heavily um, in the book because he was a massive influence, wasn't he, at first? That's how it all started. Yeah, it, it was. You know, I was seven when I was lucky to, to be given a, a go-kart for Christmas. I mean, uh, it's not very often you get given a gift like that. Yeah. But uh, we spent every weekend together racing around the world traveling to scotland and 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 uh, everywhere around around the uk uh and uh he was there all the way through my my formula one career until i won the world championships and you at school you sort of had this double life really because you couldn't get involved in all the social side of school with friends and things like that yeah. because you were so dedicated to the go-karting but you liked that escape yeah and uh, with school you never really want to stand out you don't want to really be different, and that was what it was like for me from, from 8 to 12 years old. You know, you don't want to do something that's very different. I didn't know if kids at school would find it cool that it was karting. Mm. For, for him to, uh, to go through the karting, uh, through the uh, you know, sort of uh, initial classifications of sport and uh, of, of racing, and then to Formula One, I mean, what a... For both of you, what a thing. You know, you yeah. get your first seat. Yeah, that, yeah, when I... I got my seat from Frank Williams back in, I was, not, I was 19, it was back in 99. And uh, the first person I saw was obviously my dad when I walked out. So I gave him a big hug and so, ma so many emotions, so many memories that I have uh, of us together. And you know, when you're that close to someone, you do argue now and again, but we never had big arguments. Um, and he was there through the good times, the bad times. And, was he uh, there through the Playboy times? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Can we get rid of this word? Well, Let's scribble this a, word. I'd be disappointed if there wasn't just an element of that. But that's Young, you're free, <laughs> single, racing driver. I mean, come on. Yeah. Yeah, it's You great. must have done it a Thank bit. You. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I think it was more that I, I loved... You know, I love Formula One. It was the best job in the world. But also, I loved having fun away from, from the track as well. But, um, yeah, it's just a horrible word, isn't well, it? What sort no, of teenage mean, driver were you? A teenage driver, well, yeah. I failed my test first time. Did you? Yeah, so I didn't pass first time. I passed so. the first time. Did you? Yeah, did you? Aww. That's a no! Yes! <laughs> it is. You also talk about in the book about the importance of surrounding yourself with really good people because yep. I guess you don't get to the level in sport that you did without being extremely competitive and that need to win. But you said that sort of crossed over into your personal life sometimes. Yeah, for, for me, because I've, I travel so much um, and I don't really have a base. Mm. So I travel with people that, um, you know, are, are good friends. You know, my yeah. physio, Mikey, was Mikey Muscles, used to... Uh, I worked with him for 13 years, the same with my manager, the same with my PR man who's here, James, my PA, Jules. It's, it's the same people. I need a good group of people around me that I trust mm. um, and also keep my feet on the ground. Yeah. So, so the loss of your dad was a, a, a blow, like a body punch, wasn't it? He was always there, someone to talk to, someone to bounce things off of. Uh, so when he, was, he passed away at the start of... Uh, 2014, um, the racing was completely different for me. It was completely hollow. It didn't really mean anything to me. Um, yeah, so it was, it was tough. And I probably stayed in the sport longer than I, I should have done. But um, people always say you should realise the end of your career and do one more year, yeah. just to make sure that it is final. So I think oh, I did the right so just thing. keep coming back. Exactly. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, and, and, and then after that, how do you pick yourself? Because obviously, you know, dealing with that grief and it's different for people that can just sort of step away and deal with it privately. But for you, you couldn't do that. You, you can't do that. So how did you cope with it? Again, by friends and family. You know, mm. my dad was obviously big in my life, but he was also big in, in the Formula One world, you know, yeah. the circus of Formula One. He was, he was like a piece of furniture in, in the paddock, you know. Um, when I visit races now, I still get people coming up to me, so, you know, with a tear in their eye, saying, you know, I miss, I miss your dad as much as you do. And uh, 
Yeah, Formula One is definitely worse off uh, for losing losing my dad. He was a, a real personality. But it hasn't right. taken away your love of racing and no. wanting to continue to it, race. It took away my love because my whole F1 career was with him by my side. He was at every race. Uh, well, he missed one because of illness, but he was there at every race. So Formula One just felt wrong. Um, so I retired from F1 and I've had a year off and I've, I've actually raced in a, in a series in Japan once this year mm -hmm. and it's brought my love back for racing. Um, I had such a good time. It was like being oh, a kid again, jumping in a car. So um, I'm in a really good place. Yeah, good.